Bill. Thank you very much. I hope the, the session goes well because today it, everything that could have happened, happened. So I actually had to redo the entire presentation, but it's okay. I mean, um, we, are, we are good to go. So I'm happy about that. So let's start with the presentation. And yes, framework agnostic REST API testing. And the title actually said only testing, but I'm also going to add the development. A little bit about me. Um, you can hear a different accent. That's because I'm from Mexico. I live in Switzerland. I work for a company called Carcon, and I'm a Java champion. And this photo um, actually summarizes what I like to do. I like to travel or used to travel a lot around the world. Uh, conferences or on conferences in this case, this was Jay Crete. So that's something I really, really like to do. Uh, when I'm creating a session, um, there are several motivations why, why I want to present something. And most of the times it's because I'm fond of some tools. And we as we are developers, so we are as good as our word tools are. And not only that, we can learn new tools, but how proficient we are, it's going to be decisive on how fast, how um, how good can we deliver or, or even enjoying the development process. So these are the tools that I'm going to present. Um, yes, I usually do this session with test containers, and I will describe why, because that's also one of my most favorite tools ever. In this case, it's only going to be um, Wiremock, and you will notice that that's also one of the tools that I have closer to my heart. Rest assured, I'm going to talk about OpenAPI and a little bit of Swagger. So, and, and, and some interesting thing to notice, I only, or most of the time, I talked about open source software because I think open source is really, really important for all of us. So as I said, um, the tools that I'm going to present, they are brilliant for REST APIs. Not only that, and you will see why I also in love with these tools, because they are polyphacetic. Well, in case of Wiremock, um, it's very polyphacetic. Uh, the orders are totally only um, brilliant in the REST API world. So why am I going, I'm doing this? Why REST APIs? I mean, there are so many incredible topics that we can be leveraged right now. Why REST APIs? Well, as we have seen, we have gone into the micro serverless function, different versions. Um, so, it is important that we notice that even though it's not the only way of communication, um, REST APIs are very typical. And we will see them uh, in most places. And this is something interesting. The REST APIs can be consumed internally and external, or they can be public. For example, in this site that I found, and there are several ones, that are repositories or catalogs of public available REST APIs. They are cataloging, cataloging uh, almost 24,000 REST APIs. So they are there. We're going to work with them. There are several solutions. For example, if you are in the AWS environment, there are some already uh, infrastructure, the API gateway, their own testing capabilities. But remember what I said in the title, I wanted to have something that is agnostic. As I said to you, this is the second time I'm creating the slides. So there was a huge bunch of slides about why you are not using other tools. For example, Pact, for example, a Spring has its own set of tools for creating the REST API and by contract. Well, I'm comparing versions, I'm comparing maturity, I'm comparing, and, and the most important part is still agnostic. It is still 
uh, for example, for packed, it's easy if you have if you want to create um, consumer driven contract tests. If you have your packed file, you can distribute it among your your development teams, and that is perfect. But what is the assumption here? The assumption is that everybody is using Pact. Now, when we talked about microservices, we already said they are loosely coupled. We don't have any knowledge about the services, and that's OK. But that's also something that we have to think about of the development teams. Sometimes we don't know what they are using for documenting. Sometimes we are we, we, we cannot assume things. So for me, using OpenAPI and Wiremock, it's, it's good. And you will see why it's amazing. But let's say conservatively, it's good because I'm not using or I'm not doing any assumptions. The, inter the next topic that I really want to talk on, most of my sessions have something like this, is about design. And why do I talk about design? Because we are not the best ones at doing that. So when we're talking about creating APIs, it notice it, it, you can you can see that sometimes we jumped the gun. Sometimes we start in the different order that we're supposed to be doing things. So as I said introduce a new concept that it's increasing the usage of REST APIs, then use some of the not so great practices that we are used in our industry, and then develop and test different versions, different environment, heterogeneous machines. And this is the part where I always said, I like these tools for two reasons. One is for development, and the second one is for testing. They were born in testing, but for development, they are also interesting because I can have a very light development environment without bootstrapping a huge amount of services because they run great in the cloud, but they may not run so well on my laptop. Anyway, let's continue. So we do have sometimes issues with the order that we create things. But if we start in the right order where we design and document and then publish and then have it as a contract to other teams, internal consumers and external consumers, then one of the tools, if you haven't used it already, uh, I suggest you to, to, to have a look. It's the Open API specification, the 310. Actually, the latest release was in February to uh, February this year. And if you start using it, there is a huge amount of tools that can be, um, you can leverage here. So have a look. And one thing that I already going to tell you is there is a lot of parsers, validations, uh, libraries for testing in different languages. You can generate code client, server, so many, many, many things. And it is a standard. Uh, so this is the Swagger editor, because Swagger was one of the groups or the, the companies that started it with the Open API Foundation. So they have really nice tools. So this is a way to see and sometimes to test your or provide to your consumers, an easy way to test a little bit, to test, to test in, in terms of to use and to document uh, and reuse some of, some of these endpoints or REST APIs. Now, this will go super fast, and I will, I will first go through the slides and then we'll jump into the demo because I uh, everything that you see here in the slides runs 
and and you will see why I, 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 I'm in love with Watermark. So Watermark is very, very robust and, and has been um, among us since 2011. So it's a very well established tool. And for example, you can run it at standalone. That's the first thing that people sometimes are surprised. You can start recording using it as a proxy and record and replay some of the mappings. You can use handlebar templates to create responses. I will explain why I like it uh, so much later on once you have seen all the capabilities. So how do we add uh, mappings, uh, very, very easy mapping. So actually, I'm going to, wait me a second, I'm going to jump directly. Uh, I hope you're still watching me. Ah, oh my goodness, wait, wait a second. So I, I want to share you as soon as I get there. Uh, perfect. Sorry. I'm going to share my entire screen now, and you will see me briefly. I hope not a lot. Okay, and let me try to make this bigger. I hope you are seeing it correctly. So what I'm doing is starting the the, uh, the wire mock in standalone version, the latest version, and I'm actually enabled the local. Uh, uh, sorry, can you increase the font size, please? Ah, uh, yeah. That's, uh, so you know what I'm going to do? Just share my screen. This screen. Hmm. Wait me a second. So I'm going to share only this screen. Yes. I hope it's better. Now it's better. Uh, not much. Uh, not much. Uh, the uh, well, no, this, this particular one, you don't have to, to, to see that well. But, <laughs> but I promise um, the other ones are, are and, and the slides will be available. So this is only just for you to, to see the capabilities. So what, okay. yeah, yeah, oh, and let me view, let me view, yeah, yeah, make text bigger, okay. Okay, probably that's better, isn't it? Yeah, much better. Okay. So Thank what you. I'm doing, it's only creating word curls, um, some requests directly to my local host at AT where I'm running my, my Wiremock standalone server. And what I'm doing is passing a request and response and then only um, requesting with that specific um, endpoint that I just created. So I can create really simple ones. This one is going to return me a JSON, a JSON, uh, a JSON response. So for example, what I'm doing here is saying, whenever you get the URL get JSON with the method get, you will return 200 and you're going to return as JSON this on conferences. So we do the request and there they are. So now, and I, I have to go really fast. My address, if mm, interesting fact, fact about my life, my, my husband is also a, develop, a developer. So he's like, you you present a lot of examples about Wiremock. And I'm like, it's because I love it. I love it and I fell in love and it's super powerful. So what are we doing here? We're using a URL pad pattern. So I'm saying that whenever you get a slash get and whatever you pass that it's a small cases and test, you're going to return here is with a pattern. So I'm creating whatever. And now if I use full test, there it is. So we can have patterns in the URL too. Now, 
what happens if I want to pass specific patterns in the body of the request? Well, you can also do that here. What I'm saying is that when you get a post method in this URL and you have to wait for the total result is four, otherwise this is not going to work. So, and there it is. I received a 200, so it was okay. Perfect. So get a post. Uh, you can do all the methods that you want. Now, this is going to be a little bit more complex, but again, super interesting. So what I'm doing here is using a request model. So with a response template, this is the part where I was saying that we're going to start using templated with handlebars. So when I get the get multi query, I'm going to pass as the body here, and this is the important part, the requery request query things, and see how I'm using it. The first, the, the, the second to last element in whatever I pass as a query, and the last element on the request. So if I pass this request, the first element is one because it's things one. Ah, this is important. I'm escaping this because I'm using seashell. Don't ask. I for it's very useful most of the time. Second to last is going to be two, and things uh, the last element is going to be three. If I were to pass only two elements, then the first one is one, the second to last is one because I only have two elements and the last element is two. So if I were to pass a new one, and this is why I usually copy paste because when I'm nervous, I type so slow. So now if I pass that and it was totally incorrect, as I told you, one character and I'm doing it incorrectly. So the first element is one, the second to last is three, and the last is four. So as you can see, they are very, very, um, Wormoth allows this kind of stuffing really easily. And it also provides functionality for other kind of um, functions, for example, date date and time. So what I'm doing now is passing in the body, the now as in now, the Java now. So if I now curl the date, it is now. Oh, what a surprise. Now it's now. Okay, so let's continue. Now I'm going to use offset. It has tons, tons, tons of different um, functions. Actually, I will return to the um, to the presentation to show you because in, in the slides I put most of the functions that you can pass. And so you, you have a taste of what it what can do. So in this case, I'm using the offset with one year. So yes, it's now, but it's 2022. So I hope things will be better there. Um, Okay, so now we have seen time, date. Let's see another one that I also find very appealing, which is the random values. So in this case, we're creating a random value of 27 characters, alphabetic, and it's going to be in upper cases and in the URL random. If I call it, there they are. If I call it again, another one, another one, another one, and you get the idea. Um, yeah. So uh, these are all the functions that we can use. We can also use integers, decimals. So let me clear it again. Now we're getting an integer, we can say from five to nine. So we have the lower and the upper, and I only get eight, seven. So of course, this is not going to be very surprising because the, the, 
the, the limits that I put are very restrictive. You can use math, um, math one plus two by um, module, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's see another one that is really interesting. So, what happens if I want to use regular expressions? Well, you can use regular expressions. Again, it shall. This looks so horrible. This is because I have to copy and paste from uh, Seashell. So. In the documentation, and I have no notes there. You don't have to do that, but let's say, let's see. Now, if I do um, a curl, passing as the payload in the body as definition, the the regular expression, it's only letting it pass the small um, lower levels strings. Well, actually, yes and not the numbers. If I pass definition 2021, it only returns definition. What else? Um, you can uh, part it, like parts. Once you have the regular expression in the request body, you can get the specific chunks that you are interested on. And Another example. Yes, I get too excited with Wiremark. I know, I know. Bear with me. <laughs> so, what happens? Um, what other thing that we can do? And it's really interesting. We can um, delay. So, we the Wiremark allows you to have this stopping with different delays, and you can have fixed delay. You can have uh, distribution type of delay to make it more random if you want. Oh, let me, let's create it again. And let's get it. It was, it will eventually come, eventually. Uh, it has, it has, it can be logarithmic, it can be uniform. Uh, the other one that we can also do is chunk dribble delay. And I actually going to return to the screen, to the presentation, bear with me again. You know, frustrated by your windows. So I'm going to share again. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's share the entire window, why not? Wait me a second. Star window and yes, you will see. So as I said, the standalone we enable the local response templating. I didn't show how to record with a proxy, but um, I can do it at the end if we have time. I wanted to show you like where is the image. So these are the examples that we were looking into and with some of the modification, but this is the important part. So this is what I wanted you to, to see. So we have um, time and date offset. We can send different time zones, like Australia, Sydney, with a different format. We can send it in Epoch. We can send it in Unix, uh, the random string. We can send it um, with a different length, different type. Um, so, as you can see, it's very, very, very polyphasetic. Um, integers, we have decimals, you can specify the lower value, the upper value. As I said, mathematical functions and the regular expressions. As I mentioned, you can set the regular expression to extract into the request body and you extract it in a specific uh, pattern and then you can write down that pattern as you want. And this is what we were looking at into the fixed delayed, um, fixed delayed um, um, responses with the distribution. This, the, the one that we created was a log normal distribution with those values. You can have the uniform, the log roll, um, normal, you can get the chunk delayed to mock really slow networks. So you can say, oh, send it in chunks in five chunks. 
and with a different duration. And not only that, and this is something that I also like, simulating faults. So you can say that you have a malformed response chunk or all this kind of faults. So, and the other one that is really, really important as, as we are requesting different endpoints uh, where a mock is um, checking how close we were into a, in a specific mapping that we had, and it also keeps track. We can identify the request, so we can also check if we have been calling once, twice, more than once, so it's really, really interesting and powerful. Again, um, something that I, I will show you right now is that all these mappings, the information that I created with Curl, that it's horrible, I know, but I wanted to copy and paste really fast, um, are being recorded. So at the end of the day, you will have two directories, one with the files and the other one with the request. And in the request, yeah, I will show you how, how do they look. So you can uh, reset, delete them. And whenever you start your mock standalone jar, it will actually check what you have in these directories and use them. So the admin API, so you have an idea of what you can do is create a new one, delete all, reset, persist um, by ID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The other thing that I didn't mention, and I didn't have enough time, or I didn't want to use enough time for where I'm up, because rest assured, it's also very, very powerful, uh, is the scenarios. So to make this even more powerful is to create the steps. The first time that you request to a specific endpoint, you get an answer. The second time that you request to the same endpoint, you get another answer. And this is a stepwise response. So this is what it's known as in this scenario. <sighs> okay, so something really interesting. Uh, if you are using Chrome as your developer development, um, the browser, as I do, there is an extension that is really quite nice. I'm going to demo it right about now before we jump into that. Let's see uh, here. Let me make this huge. So, well, not huge because then I lose that. Wait me a second. So this is these are my mappings. As you remember, I was playing like crazy, showing you the, the different um, uh, with curl, and I was connecting to my 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 um, standalone wire mock server. So here they are, and you can see exactly what I did with curl. You can see it here. So you, you can create or edit something. So it's a really, really, really nice uh, addition to your Chrome develop uh, to your to your Chrome um, extensions. So let's go back and this is the directory, almost the same directory where actually the same directory where I'm running my wire mock jar. So if I use three, let me get it super big and let me increase the size. If I use three, you will see that I have what I told you, the files and the mappings. So, but you see that I have so, so little of them and in the, in my Chrome version, let me, I have to nail that better. Sorry, you are like my. Okay. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Um, so, uh, what you see here, I have more mappings defined than the ones that I have in their directory. The reason of that is because I haven't persisted everything. Just check. And now I'm missing my, let's go back. So if I want to persist all the ones that I have in memory, I only need to call 
something that really looks as um let me see finally and then is if we now do again the three you will see that i have more and what i wanted you to see was not only that um let me by list so what happens if i open one of the mappings see there i have the get date get date offset it's created uh with a different unit <laughs> identifier <laughs> the 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 requests or the stoppings that i was creating so as you can see um why i like warmog so much because if for some reason you are the back-end development team and your front-end development team uh, really needs to com completely work in a sync with you instead of telling them download this version and store this it is here is a jar here's are my two directories i there are plain text files and you can run your own mock as simple as that and it's plain text so if they want to they want to create something weird or different they can do it they can even play with the delay distribution to generate their own faults if they don't want it so as you can see Wiremark for me is not only for for testing, but it also helps us developers and the different teams to be more productive. So let's go back. What happens if we are not a curl fan and we are also not fans of Atom? We are Java developers. So what do we do? Before I jump into the Java part in the few minutes that I have left. Let me talk about another tool that I love. It's Rest Assure. Why do I love it? Because it brings the expressiveness of Groovy for parsing JSON into the testing arena. And it is fantastic. So let's go with the coding part of this. Um, view, let me open. This is the worm mock. Let's increase the size. Let's increase this. So, okay, perfect. First, first super interesting thing for you is Excel is going to use Groovy, the version 309, and it's going to use the Groovy console. And before you start doubting how crazy is she, let me tell you why I do this, because there, there is a reason for that. And the reason, as soon as we find my, my window, let me increase this. The reason why I'm using the Groovy console is because I like my coding examples to fit in a single screenshot one single file and you should be able to run whatever i'm telling you that's my aim usually i can make it happen um, sometimes i cannot so let's start from the beginning so we're going to show i'm going to show you how to use wearmog uh the unit 5 and the latest version of rest assured so we're going to clean nothing under the sleeves. What I'm going to do is to start a Wiremock server. We are going to create um, a very, very small JSON object. And we're going to create two endpoints. And one is 200, the other one is 204. And we are going to assert things. So now if I just execute this, Groovy script, we can see that there is zero failures and I'm happy. And we're running in the port 1000, well, 190. So, I, oh, the warning in the slides were because 
I'm faking the server with Wiremock. I'm faking the client with rest assured. What am I testing? Well, I'm testing that this is super simple to do. I'm, I'm showing you how you can fake both things, but usually you shouldn't do it at the same time as I'm doing here, but you get the idea. So this was the like, hello world. I, we create only, most of the, my, my tests here to, to keep it inside the Groovy console, I hello worlds, so maybe a little bit beyond um, the hello world. Here, I also creating, let me first run it. So we see that I don't have any failures. It was reasonably fast. What I'm doing here is I'm creating the, the a stop for this URL, JSON pet, uh, with that UUID, it's going to return, and this is the important part, it is going to return a file inside, um, well, that is containing the pet.json inside of my folder resources. So I'm checking um, that it's actually happening, that I'm changing my sub, and then looking that I, I, I'm really doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, as I said, I'm, I'm faking everything here, but at least I'm consistently faking. So how, how am I in time, it's done. I hope we have still time because i i almost there so again well edson is not here but i am here um yeah. so what depends what you want to share <laughs> you're just three minutes over uh, okay no is, I, i'm going is, fast don't worry i over already uh, so yeah it's just three minutes hey, sorry <laughs> then um uh, it's amazing you should try it um uh, take my word for it the slides are going to be there and if i didn't manage to convince you to take a look into warmock um shame on me and as see it was the last one sure almost so, in time almost in time. thank you shell uh it was groovy <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but it was amazing. I totally recommend you to use Warmock when you need to mock uh, the real things. Um, and totally give a try to Warmock in Quarkus. Um, works like a charm, especially when working with REST APIs. And as Michelle mentioned, um, if you need like to you know help your front-end colleagues or help your other colleagues that are interacting with your APIs, definitely use Warmock. Definitely use JUnit to test and unit test your your work because the tested work works the best. Um, and I need to thank you again. Uh, do not forget to share all the good stuff, the repositories and everything with us because yeah, we are keen on trying things on our own and we do need to be like trying more with our Wiremock. I didn't use some stuff with Wiremock, the ones that you shared. And thank you again.